After this, we'll play some 20 minutes till dawn. For sure, for sure, for sure. It's a variety day. And then after that, we'll, pay, we'll play Twilight Struggle. Why Isaac, though? I mean, honestly, this... I have not taken a cold medicine with a DXM in it today. But my brain feels like I've taken a cold medicine with DXM in it. So I really... Like, when I was playing Super Auto Pets... I was not making good strategies and sticking with them. Sometimes I would just click the roll button like seven times in a row. I really need to just take like, I, I need to play a game where I can go on complete autopilot. Okay. That way I can I can provide a minimum level of, of quality entertainment, hopefully. No, I was not robo tripping, but I will say I was, two nights ago when I took some cough medicine, I was too lazy to get a teaspoon out of my uh, kitchen drawer. So I just, like, used a bottle and went like, Kung. I looked at the, uh, the dosage, right? And I was like, okay, so the dosage is supposed to be like 10 milliliters or something like that. I felt like I probably got 15 milliliters in my mouth. And the first thing I did was Google... Um, what happens if you overdose on DXM? And it turns out it's really bad, but you're probably not going to do it by just accidentally taking a double dose from the bottle one time. <laughs> but I was like, oh my god, I don't feel quite right. What the heck? Then I did read, like, when I Googled it, I read an article from the CBC that was, like, this 21-year-old kid was, like, he started getting high off cough medicine, and then, like, he wanted to bring awareness to the issue and get pharmacists to put the cough medicine behind the counter because it's too easy to abuse. And I was like, man, I can't even, I can't buy shit at the pharmacy anymore because every medicine can be abused for, like, recreation. Now I'm going to have to get like a permit to purchase like extra strength Tylenol. They're going to be like, you know, uh, do you, have you consumed any alcoholic beverages today? No. Have you ever had sex with anyone who's ever had sex with anyone who's ever been to sub-Saharan Africa between 1976 and 1994? And I'm going to, come on, man. I just want the, I just want the Advil. I'm buying some Midol for my wife. Please. It's not a reused joke. It's called a callback. It's this. It's the foundational layer of all humor. Okay. Anyway, let's go. What's next? A license to make toast in my own damn toaster. But I, to to the credit of the CBC, they did interview a pharmacist, and he basically said what Chad just said, which is, you know, pretty much every medicine can be abused. So. Uh, I'm not going to be putting the cold medicine behind the cabinet, or b behind the counter, I should say. You know what? This could do something for us. This is uh, HP up. Even better, actually. Help me. Anyway. I was stealing DXM off the shelf as a theater, or as a teenager, <laughs> as a theater. <laughs> I told you, I'm messed up today, man. Really? They, I mean, I hate to say this, I got, like, you to blame. I don't really want to, like, make any enemies or whatever. But at the same time, like... Now I can't buy cold medicine after, like, 8 p.m. Because you were stealing it from the damn grocery store pharmacy? You're actively making the world worse for me. Yes? Okay, well, you know what? The fact that you just owned it makes me think this is kind of based. Semi-based. Okay, I should not be doing what I'm doing here. This is not sensible. Dirty Touch was not the right choice here. They started carding for it when I was a teenager, and I'm your age now. Holy cow. Can I, I, I don't know if this is going to get me, like, this video be demonetized on YouTube or whatever. 
Couldn't you just smoke weed instead? I'm not necessarily advocating for either, but if, like, my child was, like, it's a choice between Robitussin and cannabis, I would be like, I'll drive you to the dispensary. I don't want... That's how Pimp C died. I don't want you getting crazy off the lean. Oh, I guess you can't steal the weed. Okay, well, you know... With that in mind. <laughs> okay, carry on, I guess. I will also say, when I read... Because uh, I read like four articles about DXM abuse while I was brushing my teeth. It seems like one of those things you should not use as a drug. You know they have those charts that's like, oh, here's the drugs that are like worse, worse on your body, worse on society, worse for like an addictive quality and stuff like that, and then like enjoyable. It was near the bottom of like every single category. It was like, nobody really likes it. It really screws your body up. You'll throw up for the first hour before you even experience anything. It's terrible. I mean, I, when I was looking at these charts of like, you know, perceived levels of harm, and I think DXM was like up there with solvents. It's when you like open a bottle of nail polish remover and just sniff it down. Have you read the legendary heroin post on Reddit? I, I reference it all the time. The one where the guy is like, I, ask me anything, I'm going to try heroin tonight, I'm just not going to get addicted forehead, and then six months later he's like, oh, uh, well, I got addicted. I mean, it's kind of a sad story, but it is also kind of like, oh, well, like, what'd you expect? He died? He died? I didn't know the, the end of the story. I thought he just, like, you know, was... He had ruined his life. I didn't know, like, he had ended his life. No, he's alive now? Okay, Because anytime you bring up, like, a post on the internet that's from, like, before 2007... Well, this is probably, like, 2012 now, I think. Any, anything is like, more than 10 years old on the internet, people are like, he died. Everybody says the kid who uploaded the Eye of the Spider died. Is that true? And then also the lead singer of the band who sang video games all the time and every day. Hello. Oh my god. You got an otter. Yo, that's so cute. What did you say? Whoa. You saw water? Yeah. There were a lot of sea... We watched the sea lion show. Oh. It wasn't really a show. They were just feeding sea lions. But the sea lions, they splashed waters. Yeah? Was it fun? Yeah. Yeah. It was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And then we saw <laughs> so many turtles. Yeah. 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 And then we saw so many fishes. Yeah. We saw Holy cow. Yeah, she was having such a good time. And then, uh, she was, there was a huge otter statue. And then we took photos. She got a little, she got scared, so she couldn't, like, touch the otter. But she wanted the otter. Yeah. So we went to the gift shop and then got an otter. Wow, you like your otter? Yeah. yeah. She loves otter. <laughs> she came in with, like, She's holding her stuffed otter with two hands. She came in like this. Oh, careful, honey. There's the, the fan cable. And then I dressed her aquarium theme. Wow. Do you want to show Chet the otter? Can you show it to the camera? Can you show your otter to the camera, honey? Show it right here. Right over there. Lift high up. Can you... There you go. <laughs> <laughs> did you have fun today? Yeah. yeah. Where did you go? I don't know. 
aquarium, right? Yeah. 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 Simba. <laughs> Simba. Oh, she said a hotter place. We went to the hotter place. Yeah. <laughs> so cute, honey. Okay, I'll see you soon, honey. Bye bye. French fry? <laughs> she does be, she do be loving the French fries. I'm just gonna be honest. So everybody thinks that like when they're a parent, they're gonna feed their kids like a perfectly balanced uh, dinner every single night. Even I thought that, right? I'm like, I'm not gonna be a lazy dad. I'm just gonna do everything perfectly correct. Last night, um, I made quesadillas for all three of us. She didn't want to eat her quesadilla. So I said, what do you want to eat for dinner? And she said, cupcake. And I was like, come on, be reasonable. And then I looked around the kitchen and I said, how about bread? And she said, yeah, bread. And then I cut up half of a hamburger bun and gave it to her. And she just ate that. And I was like, you know what? Probably being a good dad is probably just doing uh, your best. And your best is not always going to be the same. <laughs> I made her the like a good quesadilla that she could have eaten. She said no. And I said, how about this brioche hamburger bun from the grocery store? And she said, that's the good stuff right there. And I was like, all right, you know what? I don't feel good about this being your only dinner. But if you feel okay about it, then so be it. No, don't ask me if my daughter is morbed, okay? She will never morb. Unless she wants to, in which case she can do anything she wants. Perthro, soul of the forgotten, soul of Bethany. I'll take the soul of Bethany. What about goblin mode? I fully support her right to go goblin mode. Although, I think I've got goblin mode and gremlin mode confused. Apparently, goblin mode is when you go full hikokomori and you um, don't shower for like six months and uh, just play Lost Ark 24-7. So yeah, it doesn't always have to be Path of Exile. That's gremlin mode? No, I thought gremlin mode was when like someone asks like, what do you want for dinner? And then you say like, cigarettes. And then people are like, I love her, she's so crazy. Isn't that what gremlin mode is? No? Uh, that's goblin mode? No, because a gremlin is like Natsuki from Doki Doki Literature Club. Everyone's like, ooh, my gremlin waifu. Goblin is like... I don't even know what the like defining characteristic of, of a goblin is. They're like tiny little green guys who... I didn't even mean... I literally just hit the space bar for no reason, but I think it's pretty blessed. Although I do think I got rid of Holy Grail. They're just funny little guys. Goblins uh, love gold, right? That's, that's also one of their defining elements. I feel like in video games, goblins always have an attack that's like when they strike you, they steal a little gold. Eden's soul again, huh? They just love treasure. Okay. Anything shiny. What the hell is a damn... Yeah, because gremlins are like from the movie Gremlin. It's like they're not bad guys. They're just like kind of silly. And what, what the hell... Where does an orc fit in? Like, I feel like the orcs from Lord of the Rings are kind of like... Those are more goblins than gremlins. Because they, they're kind of like... Don't they love treasure? Those are the Urukai? No, not the Urukai, okay? That say meat is back on the menu. I'm talking about the actual orcs. Not the ones that were crossbred between orc and human DNA at Soromon's birthing pots. Retconned by the villainous Peter Jackson, of course. Okay, I don't want it. I'm just going to say it. There's too many monsters. 
Like, or orcs, goblins, and gremlins are the same thing. Don't even get me started on ogres. I know, is a, an ogre is like a big goblin that doesn't care about treasure. Ogres and trolls are the same thing. Ogres are trolls too. Go and brush your shoulders off. There's just too many, man. There should only be like five monsters in video games. Bats, that's a big one. Bats are up there for sure. One, I, personally, I would choose goblins. Out of the goblin, orc, ogre, gremlin paradigm. And then, of course, my favorite enemy type, uh, Corrupted Man. Like, when I have a, an Elden Ring boss fight and is against, like, a big monster, I sleep. When it's against a guy who's uh, me but six inches taller, I'm like, oh, shit. I'm about to get my ass beat. Oh, of course, if, if we're talking about the, the base, the mother sauces of enemies, if you will, and you will, you gotta have the furtive pygmy so easily forgotten. Because I, I do not be forgetting about the furtive pygmy. That's magic mush. I'm insane. Spider, bat, snake, dragon, god, something like that. That's, I think that's enough. New sap meta. I don't... Dude, forget sap. I quit. Just kidding. I'll be back tomorrow. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> By the way, I... You guys... Not all of you, but I'm going to say that it has to be all of you. Because you're going to deny that it was you saying it in the first place. On Friday, I was taking a lot of minus twos for saying that Mario Strikers looked kind of like ass. Okay? So Friday night, I said maybe perhaps it's me that's wrong. That was not worth it. Um, and I watched a streamer play some Mario Strikers. Five minutes into the stream, he said... He was reading a comment from chat. He said, Hey, how's the game? And then his exact words were, Honestly, I don't want to be the one to say it, but this game's kind of mid. So I think you owe me an apology. That was coming straight from the horse's mouth. Okay, so one person. Um, hello, hello, they're a streamer. Their opinion is, is worth at least six one guys. You need seven or no dice? Ah, dude, I don't know. Are any of the any of the Mario Strikers streamers still playing Mario Strikers? Or, or have they all moved back to workers and supervisors, Soviet Republic uh, 1963 or whatever Sips is playing? It was not Sips. A streamer is just a guy? Um... But... I... If a streamer... If a community is a reflection of the streamer, then I think you gotta get it going in the other way as well. Which is that the streamer is also a reflection of the community. So, that means, like, if you were a reflection of yourself, like in the mirror, you could speak for yourself. And as a result, if I'm a reflection of you, I think I can speak for you. Ergo, suppose hypothetically, someone asked me how my chat felt about uh, Super Mario Strikers. I think I have the capabilities to answer that question uh, post-haste, even though I have not played the game myself. So we can talk for you? No. Okay, you know what? I'd like to rescind what I was just saying. That was mostly for humor-based purposes.
I'm just calling it like I see it. I'm not being a Nintendo hater. Like I said, I'm a Nintendo uh, shareholder. I need to find a damn secret room, man. I just think, like, when I was watching the game, I mean, I, I was like, this looks like a game that would be fun for, like, 30 minutes total. I said it. I said it. Strikers was made in Vancouver. Honestly, my condolences to my civic uh, countrymen who, who were saddled on that dead-end project for two years. Okay, that's too far. I'd like to apologize <laughs> immediately. <laughs> it could have been perfectly fun to work on for all I know. Also, it wasn't made in Vancouver, was it? I don't think we have like a Nintendo subsidiary up here. Lots of EA stuff, for sure. But even EA, I mean, they're not, they're making NHL, but they're making NHL in Burnaby. Come on, they're based in Vancouver? Uh, I don't think so. Burnaby? We're talking about practice, not the game that I love. This run is horrendous. Please let me into the secret room. Next level games is in Vancouver. Okay, well, like, I'm not sorry. What do you want me to say? I'm not saying the game is ass. I'm simply saying it resembles ass from a from my perspective, okay? From the perspective of someone who's not played it. Which means I don't know what I'm talking about. It might be cheeks. What's worse? Ass or cheeks? Okay, I, I know what we need to do. We need This run should be impossible to lose. We will just get HP, get Crown of Light back. Then we're off to the races. People who won't listen to you 2 love Mario Strikers. That's what I've been saying, man. Probably ass is worse because the cheek is the part that most people like. You know what? I wanted to say true, true, that's pretty true. But I don't actually know if that's true. Dude, that's a great little bit, though. We should stop asking people if they're a boob guy or a butt guy. And we should start asking guys whether they're... Uh, like, you, first you go, are you a boob guy or a butt guy? And then they go, oh, I'm a butt guy, personally. And then we say, okay, are you a cheeks guy or a hole guy? I bet you would... Honestly, if you ask that question to 100 people, I bet one person would punch you in the damn mouth. I can't uh, kill these enemies. Never mind, I'm fine. I'm a brain guy. Just kidding. I'm a butt guy. So true. Based. Based. Are you a cheek guy or a whole guy? I'm not afraid to say it. I'm like a cheek guy. I don't know if I'm the only one. No one's a whole guy. I think you're wrong. I would take the over on that one. I would say like 25% of people are, are whole guys. And honestly, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Oh, son of a bitch. 25? Wait, is it too high or too low? <laughs> I don't want this. That's too high? Dude, you're so wrong. You are so... You're wrong like Numi Rapass in Prometheus when she said we were so wrong. You're saying that 25% prefer the anus to the gluteus maximus? Yes. Yes, I, I think so. Pull it? Pull it? I'm not gonna pull it. I would rather... Because if we pull it, then I could be proven wrong. I, I prefer to just, you know, leave it a, a mystery so that I could just be always correct. Is this run Cheeks? Or am, am I mistaken? Am I just playing extremely badly? 
Numi Rapace was in Prometheus. Bro, she played Shaw. Hello, hello. She played Shaw. Hello, she was the female lead. In the Shawshank Redemption? No, but she does get shanked. And, well, she doesn't really get redeemed because she doesn't really do anything wrong, I would say. In the movie, she's mostly like the moral center of Prometheus for the most part. Okay, give me that. Does she get shod? I don't know how to answer that question, okay? I don't know how to answer that question. You're, you're sending me... These are suicide passes. It's supposed to be like, you'll set them up, I'll knock them down. You give me the easy punchline. You're giving me like a, this Harry Houdini stuff. Like, how am I supposed to get myself out of this comedy straitjacket? You're hitting me with no buts instead of yes ands. Please, it, as soon as we get Holy Crown back, I'll never get hit again, I promise. Per throw, full health, pretty fly, pretty fly. I gotta focus, man. I, ca I can't take a hit here. Just shout out Tinted Rocks if you see them, okay? Why doesn't Isaac have a mom's anus level? Oh, they um, based um, uh, the boss delirium on mom's anus because it's so uh, stinky. So they didn't need to give it representation with his own biome. Don't plus two this. Terrible. I got no jokes today, man. I set myself up badly for today's stream by falling asleep to a very morose documentary about the fundamentalist Mormon church in Utah on Netflix. I fell asleep to last night while I was having a fever. You on DMX or something? You taking over-the-counter cold medicine, you little shit? No, I only... This is not a joke. I only take the cold medicine at night. Right before bed. Because there was that one... I used to... Um, I don't know. This is like five years ago now. I used to... Like, drink a cup of... When I was sick, I would drink a cup of coffee in the morning. And then, like, right after that, I would have, like, some day quill. And then one time, I went into my wife's office, and I was like, I don't feel right. Like, I just feel like my... Like, my resting heart rate is, like, over 100 right now. And, uh... Like, I'm kind of shaky. I feel, like, really hyper. And then we went through, like, what I did that day. And she was like, oh, yeah, you know, you're not supposed to take, uh... Dayquil and caffeine, because Dayquil also has caffeine in it. That was news to me. So now... I don't want them, dude. Now I only take... Uh, or it has some kind of synergistic... Like, amplification factor with caffeine or something like that. So, I, from that point onwards, I'm like an either cold medicine or, or coffee sort of guy. And the coffee's not going anywhere. So, at night, I have the cold medicine. BRB, I'm trying right now. I'm here to tell you, it was not a pleasant feeling. Soul of burp, burp, burp. That chatter is truly lost. I mean, that's not like... You know, there were always like kids and... Say, raise your hand in chat if you were one of these individuals. Um, there were always kids in high school that were coming up with like... Innovative ways to get high. You know, it would be like, oh, I'm gonna snort pixie sticks. You know, I'm just gonna snort like pure sugar to the brain, like Steve-O style. Oh, did you know if you... What's the one that they had to caution kids against doing? Is like if you put your arms over your head and like hold your breath for 30 seconds and then someone karate chops you in the Adam's apple, you pass out.
I'm telling that's a real one, man. I, they were doing it as part of like uh, hazing on junior hockey teams or something like that. They were like, well, a kid got like permanent brain damage from doing it. I'm like, well, yeah, you don't. That can't be pleasant. I don't think you're going to wake up from like being knocked out cold <laughs> like that and be like, oh, man, I feel like so relaxed right now. This seems like a this seems like a nightmare. You Why, why don't you stick to the classics, man? Just do some, like, crocodile or something like that. Are you seeing this? He's insane with it. I feel like our damage should not be this bad. Well, what a ripoff. Tide pods. I still think that the Tide Pod stuff was a psyop. That's so huge. Thank you so much. Like, I just think that my hunch, and I'm not saying that I'm immune to it either, okay? My hunch is that every generation wants to think that the generation that's younger than them is stupider than they were. So I think they come out with all these, like, articles. Because it, it, it gets clicks, right? You get the hate clicks. Oh, did you know Zoomers are eating Tide Pods? I don't know, it's probably like one Zoomer. You know, they, they don't write an article about uh, every time like somebody over the age of 70 loses their life savings in Amazon gift cards to somebody over the phone. But like one kid dies eating a Tide Pod and apparently like it's okay to go, oh, wow, kids these days with their TikToks and their, their Twitters and their WhatsApps are eating Tide Pods. Oh, why don't you go eat a Tide Pod and stop drinking so much Starbucks? Maybe you can buy my house for me when I need to downsize. Like it's just, there's no compassion, man. Now, it might have been more than one kid that ate a Tide Pod. But they do look kind of tasty. I don't really think it's the problem with the kids. I think it's a problem that we make the Tide Pods kind of look like candy. So we should either be changing the way the Tide Pods look or we should be changing the way the candy looks or something. Because they, they do look kind of delicious. I would never eat one, but... I mean, if you're offering... I mean, I can't afford to eat them anymore. Have you seen the price of gas these days? Stop, stop. No, but have you actually seen it? It's like really expensive. I'm not just joking anymore. I went to the gas station to do some research for my next stream and I was like, holy cow, they're not joking. Please give me some good items. I know we just got the staple. I'm just going to be honest. I need more. I shouldn't need more, but I do, okay? Thoughts on Minnesota becoming part of Canada? I would take it. I, w I wouldn't... For all the jokes I make about Minnesota, it's just kind of like a big brother, little brother thing, you know? I would take Minnesota. I would take Washington. I would not take Idaho. No offense, Idaho. What border states would you take? Minnesota? I probably would not take North Dakota. I'm sorry to tell you. Michigan, I'd have to think, okay? <laughs> we would have to do a lot of cultural reprogram reprogramming for Michigan, okay? I think Minnesota, they could integrate very easily. We got a lot of shared cultural interests. You could bring over hot dish. I would try hot dish if it became my, my national dish. New York? I mean, on it, we, we can't afford it, but, but I would take it if given the opportunity, I suppose. I would take all those, like, little states, man. I, w I wouldn't say no to a New Hampshire, a Maine. Like, as honestly, shorthand, I just kind of consider those to be Canada anyway, to be honest. How dare you? What would you trade for them? Uh, excuse me, you're not going to get me to sell out my countrymen. 
But hypothetically, what could I get for a slightly used Alberta? As long as we're talking about just theorize, like, what could I get, like, a nice little basket in return, perhaps? I don't actually have that much against Alberta. Alberta and BC, they've got a little brother, big brother thing going on as well. I just, I thought, I, and again, it means water under the bridge at this point. When all the pipeline conversations were going on, Every, and maybe it's a social media psyop that I fell victim to, but the Alberta Premier kept threatening to turn off the gas taps to British Columbia. And I was like, I don't think this is how things are supposed to work in a damn democracy. It's like we're in the middle of like, uh, you know, meetings and committees and stuff like that. And they're like, how about we just deprive you of gas until you, you know, let us have our way. And I'm like, I don't think that's the way society is supposed to work, man. That guy's fired now? It was his predecessor. That's the crazy thing. And then they were like, this lady's not crazy enough for us. We need someone who will actually do it. And then that guy resigned. I don't know what's going on over there. I don't really know that much about Canadian politics. On it. I mean, about provincial politics outside of British Columbia. I'm pretty excited to uh, do my 100 hours of research required to vote on the Vancouver uh, City Council election this fall, though. I remember uh, in 2018, the civic ballot was the single longest ballot I've ever seen in my entire life. Which of these 35 individuals, uh, and, and rank them in preferred order, do you think should be the vice chair of the Parks Board? I was like, dude, come on. Sarah Kirby Young, she's got to be up there, number one. Melissa DiGenova, mm, I'm going to put her as number 35 right now. Roller Girl, okay, yeah, right. Roller Girl was closer to the bottom of my list than the top. Just don't vote for the Genova. I don't want to... Look, again, I don't even follow the civic politics of Vancouver that much. All I know about Melissa the Genova is that in her Twitter bio, it says, first millennial elected to city council. And I'm like, man, that is... As a millennial, that is heavy millennial energy. And I mean that in the worst way possible. <laughs> Finally, finally, opening doors for, for fellow Millennials. They said it was impossible in 2000 that a Millennial could be elected to city council because they were all fucking nine years old, but we, we got there. Millennials, stay winning. Don't mess with a generation that saw that Futurama episode where the dog waits for Fry forever and has lived through two, scratched out, three once-in-a-lifetime recessions. Hold on, I really got to focus here. Just excuse me. Just briefly. Anyway, that's all I got. Don't shoot me with laser beams, you piece. You should be dead. There's less damage on this run than there are poke stops in Huntington Beach, man. Come on. I got a 15 streak. You wouldn't do this to me. Who's your third pick for the Department of Sewers? I don't... Dude, I don't even know. I got to figure out who the hell I'm going to vote for for mayor this this time. I don't know. Maybe the, maybe it'll be the same guy, but I feel like he hasn't done anything. But maybe he hasn't done anything because city council sucks. Or maybe he hasn't done anything because we've been in COVID for, you know, like almost three years of his four-year tenure at this point. But then I'm like, is it a devil you know is better? He seems like a nice guy. He kind of looks a little bit like Mark Ruffalo, which is like a, you know, that's a big plus in my books. Now that I think about it, he doesn't really look like Mark Ruffalo that much. <laughs> based, based. What about Mark Rutsu? I don't know what Mark Rutsu looks like. I wish I did. What the heck is this? Algis. 
Some information that would have been useful to me yesterday. Okay, is be honest. Well, you know what? I actually we probably need this. This makes sense to me. What kind of what kind of wisps we got here? Are they doing anything? Holy cow. I'm going to lose, I think. Maybe not. This would be an extreme... I mean, it would just be a... If nothing else, at least you would believe me when I said I wasn't feeling well today if we lost this run. Where we got, like, actually good items and, like, somehow still squandered it. Just don't lose. You know what? I didn't actually, like, let that enter my brain. I think you're... What if, what if we just, instead of losing, we just opted not to? You said this run was whole earlier? Yeah, but that's when I was playing, like, garbage, um, like, by accident. Now I'm playing, like, a pro on purpose. I just can't believe, like, the items we got from the chest is like a slap in the damn face, man. They, they brought me right back to Isaac Malays. When you make references to movies, would you rather people um, shower you with attention for saying it or just ignore it completely? I've got to be honest, I, I've reached a certain level of, um, I don't want to say baseness because you shouldn't call yourself based. But I genuinely don't care now. It's weird because like I'm I'm a little bit of like a shy guy. Like I don't want to initiate conversation with with people. When I pick my daughter up from daycare, I try to wait in my car until I see the kids leave the daycare so I don't have to make small talk with the other parents. But like once we're into the conversation, I don't care how anybody reacts to what I'm saying. I'm mostly just saying it for me. Based? I don't know. I mean, I think it maybe makes me like a bad conversationalist. But I was talking with one of the dads from daycare about uh, Doctor Strange 2. And then I just started talking about Liam Neeson and Sam Raimi's Dark Man for like... I don't know. It was longer than it had to be. I was like, you know, if you... If you just like the Marvel stuff, you'd probably like Doctor Strange 2. But you'll really like it if you're a big fan of that Sam Raimi stuff. And then he hit me with like a... Oh... Which is the universal sign for, like, I don't know what the hell you're talking about, and we should, like, start a different tangent of the conversation. And I was like, really, it has a lot of similarities to the Evil Dead stuff, but I found its tone, especially in the second and third act, most similar to something like Liam Neeson's Dark Man. In my head, I was like, I'm definitely talking about Dark Man for, like, way longer than this guy cares to. But on the other hand, I, I kind of wanted to. And there's always the off chance that he'll be like, oh, I love that movie. And I'll be like, I didn't know anybody else who had even seen that movie. And then we'd become like best friends or whatever. Maybe like start building model trains together or something like that. Or maybe he'll never talk to you again. Well, that would be like not a great outcome. But at the same time, you know, it's just daycare. It's a very small period of, of an adult's life when they're picking their kid up from the same daycare with the parents that have the kids that are the same age, you know? Like, it's like tears in rain. You should have ended with thanks for coming to my TED talk. Come on. Who do you think I am? The first millennial elected to city council? Is your daughter a Zoomer? I don't even, I don't think they've named like two-year-olds yet. They gotta wait until they have like some personality. Gen Alpha? No, I don't like that name. I mean, Zoomer is a horrible name and I don't mean that to be rude to the Zoomers. I actually think they just did you dirty. Why the hell are they called Zoomers? I'm not that fond of like millennial. But it does at least make sense, you know? Well, kind of? I don't know. 
Because I'm a millennial. I was 12 in 2000. That doesn't really seem like I'm a millennial. Zoomer's just a nickname? I guess they're called Gen Z, right? That makes sense. That's pretty true. Because millennials are supposed to be Gen Y. How do we get to be named the greatest generation? Like, is that something that only happened, like, uh, after that generation was adults? Or were they born and they're like, oh, amazing, this is the first baby born in the greatest generation? Seems like kind of like a self fulfilling prophecy. You piece. They named themselves. Did you know the brain named itself? It's more likely than you think. No, you're, I don't even know if they were naming generations back then. They were too busy just trying to, like, you know, plant more wheat, I think. This is what it's all about right here. We got a little bit more time and space, I guess, to concern ourselves with that sort of stuff now. I can't... Dude, honestly, I'm so glad I was born, like, when I was. Can you imagine, like, having to sew your own socks? Holy cow. I don't think I could handle it. Every... When I need a... a like, a pair of my socks gets a big hole in it. I wear it for like another, I don't know, six months. And then when the hole becomes so large that my feet get cold when I walk around at home, I throw them in the trash, I go to Winners, I buy 10 pairs of socks for like 75 cents. I don't think I could handle living in like 1850 where you'd either have to like darn the, the hole yourself or you'd just have to like create a brand new pair of socks. I don't think I could do it, man. 3.75 cents per sock? Yeah, but it's winners. Anyway, slash marker. I, this Isaac, uh, too.